So we have one hour to churn some little nectar from the lotus mouth of our dear Nada Tomdas Thakur. Jai Su Devi Ki Jai. So Naratam Das Thakur, in his verse 100 of uh, Prema Bhakti Chandrika, he is explaining again and again and again and singing again and again and again his love songs. Because Naratam Das Thakur is the master of all love songs of Shri Shri Radha Mohan, Shri Shri Radha Krishna. And he is singing in this verse. Leela rasa sada gana Yuga la kishora prana Pratana kori ko apila Jeeva nema so he's praying to Radha Mohan in all of his songs, in all of his kirtans or bhajans or all of his expressions that came from his mouth he was singing and he says here i will pray with the desire to always be able to sing about the rasika pastimes of the yuga lakishore advaita it is verse 100 in prema bhakti chandrika i will pray with the desire to always be able to sing about the Rasika pastimes of the Yuga Lakishore, who are my very life. The fallen Naratam Das Thakur or Naratam Das says, in life or in death, I don't want anything else. So this is a three page uh, purport of Vananda Das Babaji and I just would like to take out some of the main points that are inspiring. I mean they are all inspiring but some of them are quite you know long and so I just put the gist, the essence. Jai Radha Charanji Ki Jai! So he has three desires that he always wants to relish, that he always wants to put in front of Radha Mohan, in front of the lotus feet of his spiritual master. And he is praying that this will always go on for in life and in death means whether he is in this body or in the next body or in his spiritual body, he doesn't care. He wants to continue doing that. He's just, he's just so absorbed in relishing to sing about Radha Mohan and about their all beautiful forms, qualities and pastimes and leelas. They are his very life. And these are his desires. He has no other desires. So we can, by listening this, we are blessed also that we can also go deeper and deeper in these desires. And Lila uh, Rasa Sadagana, Ananda Das Babaji explains that all of the attributes, the forms and the names of Radha Mohan are Rasa or relishable. So that to, to sing about that is, is giving relish 
It's, it's giving relish to Radha Mohan and also to the ears of the devotees who are listening this. And that is a very, very important service. Why? Because giving relish or giving pleasure to the ears of Radha Mohan is a very intimate service. And we know that uh, when Srila Naratam Das Thakur was here on this planet Earth not long ago, maybe 400 years ago, his singing was so relishable. The devotees were, were rolling in ecstasy on the ground, dancing and crying. And we have heard about famous meetings of devotees of especially one Kirtan festival in Kituri Gram. This is a village in Bengal where they all met Janava Ma, Naratam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, all the, the devotees who were there in their separation pain from Nittai and Gaur's disappearance. They were meeting and they were singing and relishing all their glories and all their pastimes and singing in such a way that the heart were melting, the hearts were melting. And Ananda Das Babaji is making the point in this singing, it is, oops, Radhe? Oh, oh, Radhe. Are you there? My, my picture became a lot, somehow strange. Radhe, now we are back. So in this singing, it is automatically that there's a manifestation of the forms of the, of the deity. So at that time, it was uh, Nitai and Gore, they came personally to sing and dance in the kirtan of Naratam Das Thakur. So that is the power of, of uh, eager prayers of love and the power of the, of the perfected singers. And that will melt the heart of the listener. And when the heart is melted, then the spiritual impressions can come. Bhakti can come. Actually, the, the process of bhakti is, is, is the process of receiving and, uh, and being ready to receive in the mood of, of love and surrender and humility. And that is expressed in beautiful songs. And especially Naratam Dastako, he was very much uh, chosen by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to show the most devotional example of this singing and expressing this love from his golden heart to all the bhaktas, to all the listeners, and to all future devotee, aspiring devotees like ourselves. Because we know the sound vibration is never ending. The sound vibration is still active. So when we connect ourselves to the song of Naratam Nastako, to his prayers, we have the same chance of our hearts to melt and of our consciousness to connect with that divine love of Radha Mohan and their service. And another point that Baba is making that this Lila Rasa Sada Gana means the singing and praying of the of the pastimes, Lila Rasa, is so relishable. And it will also include everything. The names include the forms, the attributes, and the pastimes. So when we sing, for example, Hare Krishna or Hare Rama, and there is this intense desire to really please my Swamini and her beloved in a pure-hearted and very... Uh, humble way, then even today, even though we may not be Siddha, like Naratam Das Thakur, he was Siddha, but we are following in the footsteps. We want to be their followers, their servants. We can also feel 
we can also have access to the supreme service that is offered within these songs and that is opened. It's like a gate that can be opened by, you know, sincere and sweet prayers of love. And we know in our Mungiraj Mandir, whenever there is a special festival, then the devotees want to invite special kirtanias. And uh, I don't know if you have noticed it, it was recently also that for Appearance Day of Radha Mohan and for uh, Goda Purnima festival, which were in the beginning of March, there are always some special kirtanias invited. And in the evening, and all the activities that we have done for preparing the festivals or doing some last minute services. And this has happened then we are sitting in Gurudev's room or in our rooms and we can relish the, the sweet melodies of devotion of those kirtanias who are expressing their love and their feelings in the songs, especially also of Naratom Dastaku. And I know Gurudev, when he's sitting in his chair, and then sometimes it seems like he is dozing off, but actually he's relishing. He is relishing this sweet kata from the lips of the singers who are telling a story of love of Radha Mohan and their beautiful forms and their tender smiles and their sweet eye, you know, kripa katakshas. They are sidelong glances. And all of these songs, are, when they are sung in a very sweet voice, then heart can melt. Means that I can feel some more desire to, to serve and to absorb myself on that level of devotion. And Baba says, The tasty names, pastimes, and attributes of Sri Krishna, who is the embodiment of divine flavors, are even more sweet and relishable when they join with the tasty names, form, attributes, and pastimes of Sri Radharani, who is the embodiment of Mahabhav. So when Radha and Krishna's name come together, this is even more tasty then. Because when they are together, that is our goal, to do service and to help establish their meeting. And their meeting in the Holy Name is also a meeting. That is the thing to be always conscious. In the same way, the attributes and pastimes of Prema Moi Shirada are experienced in the most delicious, delicious ways along with the attributes, pastimes of Sri Rasaraj Sri Krishna. So it's interesting that in this regard the word delicious is used. And Gurudev is always speaking about this drinking with the ears. Delicious means something that is very uh, tasteful, full of taste and full of sweet mellows. And that can come when the ear and the heart are open to receive. And when my consciousness is not so much externally identified, but if it goes inside to my soul and then from the soul level, it can dive even deeper to the spiritual form of a maidservant. Therefore, the practicing Gaudiya Vaishnavas take their identification with their Siddha Rupa along to relish the flavors of the divine pair's form, attributes, and pastimes, thus experiencing bliss and delicacy 
that stands supreme throughout the spiritual world. So here Baba is explaining that this bliss, what is experienced in this kind of spiritual realm, and as we know, there are different kinds of spiritual realms. There are the Vaikuntha Lokas, there's Tvaraka. Vaikuntha is where Vishnu is and Lakshmi and all the servants, they have similar forms. And Tvaraka is where Krishna is a prince or a king. And he has many palaces and many servants. So he says that this identification with the Siddha Rupa, with the perfected spiritual bodies, is so sweet and so special because nowhere else the living entity gets the chance to relish the flavors of the divine pair's form, attributes, and pastimes. And that stands supreme. So means supreme means the highest. The highest means the top. <laughs> There's nothing beyond that. So, and he is explaining very nicely, Baba, that this hearing, chanting or singing is a great cause of melting the heart, and it's all uh, in inclusive. Means uh, when when we hear about the sweet pastimes or qualities of Radha and Krishna in any song, and our hearts are melting, we feel attracted. We feel a relish. This is a sign that. Um, Something is happening. Something is melting, something is moving. And that is the moving of the soul. The soul who wants to go back to the spiritual eternal world. And that is mercy. It's the mercy of Srimati Radhika alone. It's a Bhakti Devi who is entering into the heart. And when she enters the heart, then there will be movements. And therefore, it is not astonishing that Nada Tom does talk work. He is praying for nothing else. He is not praying for anything that sounds very uh, amazing. Because as we know that our practice, our spiritual practice consists of hearing and chanting and singing and dancing and taking prasad. And so Naratam Dastakwa, he, he prays to always be absorbed in the glorification of this Lila Rasa. So why? It is very simple. Because when this absorption becomes so intense that there's nothing else in life or in death, then it's already accomplished. Then it's, it's only, uh, it's only a matter of time until they will manifest in front of my spiritualized or spiritual eyes. There's nothing else to do and nothing else to gain and nothing else to desire any more than this. And that is what Nara Tom Dastako is praying for. So then another prayer in this song is Yugala Kishora Pran. And Baba explains that Radha and Krishna are the self of the selves, the supreme self. And they are naturally dearer than the dear most to everyone. 
And the only reason why we have forgotten is, is because we are identifying with the material uh, existence, with the temporary bodies and the temporary life situation. But when this is awakened, when the soul is awakening to a certain extent, then love of divine becomes natural because it is our eternal nature. And uh, Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj is uh, telling about the Brahma Vimohan Leela. where it is described this one year when Krishna took the form of all the cowherd boys and even of the calves. You remember that? Brahma wanted to test this little blue boy who was living there in Vrindavan. And Brahma was not even sure if he was his, lo his lord. Because, you know, Brahma was born by Vishnu, from the navel of Vishnu. And in his meditation, he could see many things. But with this form of this sweet, innocent, cowherd boy in Goloka, he, he was not really sure who he was because he only knew his Lord up to the form of Vishnu. Because when Brahma has any questions in his, uh, in his management, of the universes, and he is a big manager. He is the, you know, the big creator. He is the big engineer of the whole material universes. So when he saw Krishna, who was playing with the cows and with the calves and with his friends, he was thinking, who is this boy? I am so attracted to him, but I don't know if he is really my lord. And so he came up with some little tricky idea. <laughs> and he, he just let the boys and the cow, calves disappear. He uh, hi was hiding them in a, in a cave. It was a, a game that was beyond time and space. Actually, it, it became one of the most astonishing leelas of Krishna's leelas games in the whole of Vrindavan. And at that time, because Krishna could not stop the lilak, he could not stop the, you know, he could not let the cowherders and cowherd ladies suffer when the boys wouldn't come back. And he could not, uh, he was always responsible that everyone in Vrindavan is, is happy, right? That's what we sing in uh, Jaya Radha Mohana, Jaya Kunja Bihari, Braja Jana Vallabha. Krishna is the one who makes all the inhabitants of Rindavan very happy. That is his natural being. All of Prajvasis want to be, want to see Krishna happy. That is their natural state of being. And Krishna wants to make them happy. So what he did, he, he just, like recreated out of his own Vishnu energy, out of his own ability to multiply in unlimited forms and in unlimited beings, he created all these cowherd boys and all these calves in a new way, but such a way that nobody could really tell that they were missing. Because what happened is that when in Brahma's life span, when he was taking them away for one day or one night, it became uh, a lot of years on this planet Earth. So for one year, all the replica, replicas that were Vishnu forms multiplied by this little sweet Krishna, everyone loved their babies more than even before. The mother cows, they love their calves like anything because Krishna is the self of all selves. So when he became their calf, the mothers could not stop give, wanting to give milk to their calves and could not stop wanting to lick the calves. 
it was amazing because although maybe they gave birth to another calf within that year, that again, still they would love the other calf more that was already elder because it was Krishna, it was Vishnu. And the same with the, with the children. So Krishna is the self of all selves and naturally everyone loves the self of all selves and same with Srimati Radhika. So that proves that when the soul becomes free from external identifications, it will naturally, she will naturally be attracted more to Krishna or to Radhika, to the self of all selves. And this soul will not be attracted anymore in such a degree to all the influences of material nature. Because that soul is not satisfied anymore with temporary love, temporary impressions. And I like this story because this story is so sweet and it shows that Krishna took away the pride of Brahma. Because Brahma thought, I am the creator, I take away these calves. But in the end, he was very much humbled because he had to admit that this is my Lord. And he didn't even know that Krishna was his Lord before. Jai Ho. And then in the last part of his purports, Ananta Das Babaji is explaining Bhakti means service. And he's praying in the song, in this verse, he is the Pratana Koribo Abhilas. His desire for service is so strong and he's only praying for service. And he is uh, then explaining into, you know, before Baba, you know, it's interesting doing the purports now for one year or so. You see that in the beginning, often Baba gives like an uh, introduction that is more based on uh, scriptures and, and more based on understanding Krishna. And then later on, he goes to the understanding of Manjari Bhav. And also in this uh, purport, in the end, he says that from the point of view of Naratam Das Thaku, he is also an amantri of Shimati Radhika in his spiritual eternal form. Especially those who render service in Manjari Bhav are wholly dedicated to service. Service is their very life's sustenance and they are always immersed in desires for service. Therefore, service is the only treasure they desire. So in that, in that desire, Naratam Das Thakur is praying to Srimati Radhika now. And Baba is quoting some of his prayers in his Pratana Gita. And how he prays to Srimati Radhika. O oh, Queen of my heart, be kind to me this time. Holding a straw between my teeth and keeping my hands folded on my head, I pray to you. I will blissfully serve you along with your dear girlfriends, dressing your limbs. Dressing, dressing, sir. Please keep me among your beloved companions for the service to your lotus feet. May I always stay in the company of your maidservants who joyfully serve you with fragrant sandalwood pulp, jeweled ornaments and silken garments. So they have the trays. Now we have the pictures where they are standing with trays. 
And on these trays, they are holding all the paraphernalia, all the ingredients for the next service, like ornaments and pulps, like very nice uh, cosmetics and silken garments. On the indication of the sakis, I will fill up a jeweled pitcher with scented water and I will bring camphor scented beetle leaves, garlands of cloves and jasmines, and different matchless edibles to Lalita, so that she can serve the divine pair with these things. Naratam thus said, May I thus once stand behind the sakis? Awaiting orders from the divine pair. So, this is the beautiful, beautiful prayer. It is at the end of the Tabot of one Siddha or mostly realized soul who was initiated by Mahaprabhu himself. Because when uh, Mahaprabhu Shortly before he left the planet Earth, he, he went into one river, Padma River. It is an arm of the Ganges somewhere. And uh, he had a meditation and he was crying out loud, Oh, Naratam, Naratam. And Nitai was there and Nitai was a little bit observing his Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, why are you crying out this name? Who is this personality that you are? You know, that you are praising so much, that you are loving so much. So Nita was the witness and Gauranga Mahaprabhu said, in the future, not, not long after we have left, there will be the special devotee. And I want you to bring him here to this place in the, in the Padma River. I will put my prema and we also your prema. We will energize this place for him when he comes, that he will get all this prema into his heart to distribute. So we know that Naratam Dastako was not just any ordinary Bengali singer. He was. So charged by the frame of Nara, of uh, Shila, of Nityananda and Gauranga personally. And that's why he also had this power that he could call them with his kirtan. But that doesn't matter that it doesn't apply to us. I want to share with you one story. from the mundane world, but which inspires me always very much when I think about the power of sound vibration. So we know that Naratom Das Thakur, he came to that place where this prema, this transcendental divine love was left behind by Gauranga and Nityananda. So he took it in his heart and after that happened, his color became golden and he was dancing and singing like a mad person. He was completely in another dimension. He was in another world. He was full of brain and everyone who could hear his singing and his speaking would also equally to their ability to receive this be charged by that frame. That is something interesting to listen to if we have a faith that it will work. But for example, maybe I have somehow sometimes doubts in this process. So I want to share one story of a very famous brain gyro, you know, gyro, you know who was uh, working with brains and uh, scientific uh, doctors who try to prove that the people are their brains. You know, there are these kind of people. 
they think I am the brain because this is where I am thinking and this is where I am and this is where all activities are going on. And when the brain is dead, then I'm gone. There are these kind of people. So this very famous uh, doctor or chiro, he became very sick. He had some infection in his spine, in his nerve system. And then this infection came into his brain. And it became so bad that when he was in the hospital, the doctors, they said he will be no more. He will soon be no more. So interesting what happened. While the doctors gave him maybe, maybe two, three days more to live, he was in his consciousness completely out of his body. And in this out-of-the-body experience, he had an, a very uh, deep impression that he could sense himself in the darkness of being. And he said, I felt like a worm. I felt like a worm trapped in some dark um, realm. And then he didn't know what to do. And then he heard some sound vibration. And in that sound vibration, there were holy names, there were prayers. So by these prayers, his consciousness was transferred to another realm. And in that realm, he could sense that there were people who were singing and dancing prayers of the holy names of God. And he felt very, very happy. <laughs> so at that point, when he was in his, you know, journey of his consciousness, his little boy came to his bedstead, you know, where the person was lying. And this little boy was only 10 years old. And he had heard in another room that the doctors were saying, oh, he will soon be gone. His infection has you know, come into his brain and his whole brain is kind of, you know, full of uh, infection and it will be out of order soon. The boy could somehow sense that this was uh, very bad. So he was running to the bed where his father was lying unconscious. And he was, you know, moving his father's body and holding his hand. He said, Dad, you... You cannot leave me alone here. You have to come back. It's not time now. You have to come back. And he was doing it with such a loving voice and with such a voice full of uh, anxiety and prayer that the father who was in another realm with his consciousness, he was brought back by the love of his son, by the sound vibration of his son's love to his body. And he recovered, and he, from that moment on, he had realized that he is not his brain. So this is a true story. And you know what this person does nowadays? Can you imagine what he does? He left all his job as a, you know, chirurg and brain practitioner. And nowadays, he is very active in mantra meditation powers and giving it to the people about the power of holy prayers, about the power of holy vibrations. So why do I tell it? Because in one way or the other, more and po more people of this world are getting ready, are being prepar prepared to realize the power of the holy names. And they will also realize that they are not this body, they are not this brain, they are eternal spirit souls who need to be connected with the divine. And they, this man, he found the second chance of his life and he completely changed his life. And he is now convinced that he was 
you know, he had this extra time to develop his consciousness, his spiritual self. And we can also see in this example the power of the sound vibration, not only what he was experiencing in this life or in the next life, but what we are practicing here in our bhakti path is about the highest power of sound vibration. And we know that Nara Tom Das Thakur, he is the messenger of this highest power of sound vibration, who was, you know, personally empowered by Gauranga Mahaprabhu, by Radhika herself. Because she is, in her spiritual form, Champaka Manjari. And why she is praying this? In life or in death, I don't want anything else. Because as the story of this brain chirog, this brain doctor tells, that in life or in death, there's nothing more valuable than that. And he was uh, giving testimony. He said, to be in a soundless, dark environment of his consciousness felt so terrible to him and he didn't know what to do he didn't know what to think what to aspire for so just think about it we are maybe simple persons who don't have such a high brain like doctors or chirogs or or any kind of person from this material world who have a lot of knowledge but we have the holy name we have these sound vibrations so in life or in death, this will be our treasure. This will be the, our guide. Only thing we have to now believe and practice and get more and more absorbed and let it happen to take everything, every cell, every, you know, every little activity of my mind over and let it let it be, let it do what it wants to do. Let the holy name take over. Let Radha and Mohan take over my consciousness, my whole being. And I will let it happen. I will let it happen in this life and in the next. I don't want nothing or anything else. That is the prayer of Naratom Nostaku here today. I will pray with a desire to always be able to sing about the Rasika pastimes of the Yuga Lakishore, who are my very life. The fallen Naratam Dao says, in life or in death, I don't want anything else. Jai Jai Shirade. <laughs> The cat of Ananda Prem is also saying yes with her white tail. <laughs> she also likes to hear about that. So, any uh, would like anybody like to um, comment and add and and uh, share on this beautiful? What do you explain? Daddy, good day. I'm listening. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> so nice, so beautiful. Thank you, Guru. It's a true story, also. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> There is more ten minute time. Still more. <laughs> also sitting. Radhe. Gopinath yeah. is also there. Shama. Wow. Yeah. I also <laughs> listening, Gopinath. <Gurdiv. laughs> My God, Rasa is there. Sizar wow. is there. Laita is there. Wow. Oh. Jaiho. Say something. Good. Yes, I see there. Advaita is there. Advaita. Prajapalasani. 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 Oh my God. We are so blessed that you are there. Oh. 
Yes. What I could listen from this story is also that uh, the love of his boy was, uh, was this moment he came back, the call of love. So this is a proof of what Gurudev is teaching, that the kingdom of love is the biggest. And even those who only believe in brain and in matter, they also believe in love. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> this, that what all souls and all living beings connected in all worlds is this is the love so we can see we are connected by love uh, even if if our mind is is a monkey and is always like to fight in that moment love is there the mind becomes pacified becomes calm and peaceful and even those who don't believe in anything they change their mood they change their mind and they come under control of radhika and that makes the difference and in this case this small boy again it's a child 10 years only little ego but a big love and so this is the beauty of the story also i can i could feel this no that he got the proof that there is more than the brain Say that. <laughs> Even in our relationships, if there is love, everything is fine. See that. Mm -hmm. Nice story. Hey, Sumiti Ji, Guranga Sundara. I want just to to add uh, that uh, to express my thank uh, thankfulness thankfulness to to you suniti because today uh, in these days we can feel in front of the paranguru samadhi some slightly wind you know breeze mm -hmm. and i just want to say that uh, today your voice was just like this breeze and uh, which is bringing us this flavor of these pastimes rasika pastimes so thank you so much that you bring us today to take bath in Padmara, Padmavati river and that you bring us in front of Janavima and give us the association of Narottam Das Thakur and all this nice family which we feel today to to be part of this so thank you so much it was really wonderful thank you Thank you, Dayanidhi, and thank you for your beautiful uh, being there and having the beautiful wedding. We could all feel so much blessed to see your love increasing and growing and how Gurudev was so mercifully sitting with you and Ananda Maima in front of Radha Mohan and giving you also to their lotus feet, I could feel it. I felt also very much blessed. And I know that just by feeling this, 
I also could feel myself being giving there because somehow we are the family of love and we are all connected. So when I saw you and Ananda, I, then I thought, oh, I also want to stand there with you. And that Gurudev is looking and giving offering to Radha Mohan of ourselves. That we also listen their call more and more. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know what? Uh, also in this Zoom, always I'm I'm such a type of person that I will never say something, you know. But uh, uh, I feel one thing uh, that whenever I take some encouragement inside of me to say something, I I, I say only only because the only reason is that I feel that after that I become object of mercy of all devotees so, <laughs> this is my motivation why i said something very good trick yes it's a big trick <laughs> wonderful yeah oh, yeah it's open it's open it's rather, rather. always keep like this you see i'm thinking on the river uh, Padmavati. Yeah. Anna? Yeah. How Narottam Das takes the uh, bath and it was the Mahaprabhu put the prema inside. Prema inside. Many are taking bath in the <laughs> yes. because he was so <laughs> so, so, so elevated soul, Narutam Das that his, his, his desire was that, greed was that. But Gurudev, which kind of prema you put inside? This is the divine love, Dibya Prem. Dibya Prem. One is a material. <laughs> material and one is divine. So this is the divine love hiding for Narottam. So I feel if he put the frame of Manjari inside. Right. Mm -hmm. And only Narottam would find it, no? Yeah, but but not the name was what? Narottam. Naruttam Narottam. He's a very realized person. So only the realized and greedy person can get this. Mm. We have to be open to receive it. So like Guru Dev also put it, no? <laughs> so Gurudev also puts the seed of Mandri Bhav yeah. without greed, it's not possible. No. no. This is only the mercy, mercy can happen. And how many are benefited? to the Narottam. Mm. Sweet songs of Narottam. Mm. A beautiful explanation of Narottam Das. Is the Narottam. The songs, I know, all who Vrindavan only remember the Narottam songs. And he sings and all teaching is there. You don't need philosophy if you know. Huh? Naruttam. Naruttam. And this is the song. Really, if somebody read it and remember, it becomes life change. Is that truth? Thank you, Suniti and Gaura Sundara. You are doing great job.
Great job. Thank you for accepting our services, Gurudev. No, no. You are a real teacher who's ex expressed the feeling of Naruto. Naruto. Yeah. Without his mercy, love cannot enter in our heart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now 5.30. <laughs> yeah. Jai Radhe Sundaram Das, are you ready for the Kirtan experience? <laughs> ready with the blessing of our dear Guru Dev. Jai Thank, Thank you all for listening you. and being there with all your hearts. Now we shift to another conference where you can hear beautiful kirtans, maybe even of Naratan Das Thakur. Nade. Nade, nade.